Welcome to another episode of Task Mathematics. Today's mini lesson focuses on order of operations. There are only four rules for the order of operations. The first is evaluate all grouping symbols, which are your square brackets, parentheses, and the fraction bar. Second, you will evaluate exponents and remember exponents means a repeated multiplication. So if you saw two raised to the third power, the two is your base, the three is your exponent, and your exponent is telling you that you must multiply your base three times. So that's going to be two times two times two. Two times two is four, four times two is eight. So two to the third is eight. Your next step, multiply, and I like to use the word or, divide from left to right. So when you're reading your problem, whichever operation comes first, that is the one that will be completed first. This also applies to addition or subtraction. So you add or subtract from left to right. Many of us, when we were in school, learned this as PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. But remember, you multiply or divide from left to right and you add or subtract from left to right, like you're reading a book. So let's take a look at some examples. The first example I have is 20 take away 6 divided by 2 times 3 plus 4. Do we have any parentheses? No. Do we have any exponents? No. Can we multiply or divide from left to right? So going from left to right, I notice division is first. So as you can see, I underlined the 6 divided by 2. That operation will be done first. 6 divided by 2 is 3. I'm going to rewrite all the numbers and operations that were not used. Again, going from left to right, you have multiply or divide. We divide it first. Now we're going to multiply. 3 times 3 is 9. So I have 20, take away my 9, and then add 4. Can we add or subtract from left to right? So if we go from left to right, notice subtraction is first. So I will subtract first. 9 from 20 is 11. And my last step will be to add the 4 to the 11 to give me a value of 15. And that's my answer. Let's try a second example. I have 48 take away 4, I have parentheses, and inside I have 2 plus 3 raised to the second power and the parentheses are closed. Whenever you see a number outside of parentheses, the operation that's going on between these two is multiplication. Okay, do we have any parentheses? The answer is yes. Now inside the parentheses, I have addition and exponents. So whenever you have parentheses and you have more than one operation, you must apply PEMDAS to the parentheses. Therefore, the exponent will be first. So 3 squared is 9. So let's write back all the numbers and operations that were not used. I still have my parentheses. But I only have one operation, which is addition. So I'm going to do that. 2 plus 9 is 11. Whenever you have parentheses, you're trying to get just one value inside the parentheses. So I have 48 minus 4. And this 4 is multiplying the 11. This means multiplication. Okay. So we finish with our parentheses. We don't have any exponents here. Can we multiply? The answer is yes. 
So 4 times 11 is 44. And our final operation is to subtract 44 from 48 to give me a final value of 4. Now these first two examples used whole numbers. Let's look at some examples that will use integers. So again, I have my rows at the top. Now, if you do not know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers, I would suggest you stop the video and go back and watch my two videos, well, actually three videos on addition of integers, subtraction of integers, and multiplication and division of integers. If you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers, you can keep watching. So let's look at our two examples. Okay, the first one I have 8 take away 6 times 2 take away 44 divided by 11. Do we have parentheses? No. Do we have exponents? No. Can we multiply or divide from left to right? The answer is yes. So going from left to right, notice multiplication is first. So I'm going to do that first. This will be 8 take away 6 times 2 is 12 minus... 44 divided by 11. Can we divide? Yes, we can. I'm going to do that now. 44 divided by 11 is 4. And we're going to write back all the numbers and the operators we did not use. We have subtraction. So we're going to subtract first. We're going to have 8 minus 12. A little trick that I use in class is I tell my students, okay, this looks like a subtraction, right? And they'll say, yeah. But notice your smaller number is first. So we'll subtract normally. So if you do 12 minus 8, that will give you a value of 4. But because the smaller number is first, your answer will be negative. Because basically, you can't really take 12 from 8. You're going to get 8, but then you're going to owe 4. So that's where you get the minus 4. And then we're going to subtract 4. So here, negative 4 take away 4. Remember when you're subtracting, because I know my students have a very big problem when they're subtracting integers. Remember when you're subtracting, it's like you're adding the opposite of the second number. So this is actually like negative 4 plus. And then here, the opposite of positive 4 will be negative 4 and then when you're adding and the signs are the same you add your numbers so 4 plus 4 is 8 and then you keep the sign so your answer is negative 8. If you knew from here that negative 4 take away 4 is negative 8 fine but I just did the actual breakdown because my students have a little difficulty when it comes to subtracting integers. Okay, let's try another problem. I have 6 times 5, take away 12, take away 3, then we have parentheses 5 minus 9, and then I'm adding 5. So do we have parentheses? The answer is yes, right here. So I have 5, take away 9, that will give me a value of negative 4. Okay, so let's write back everything we did not use. Minus 12 take away we have a 3 here I'm going to use parentheses plus 5 okay uh, do we have any exponents no can we multiply or divide from left to right so going from left to right I have a multiplication here and I have one here as well so we're going to do both of them so 6 times 5 is 30 and then here remember this is your operator I'm going to put it here. 3 times negative 4 is going to be negative 12. So here this is minus 12. Take away the negative 12 plus 5. Okay, we're going to add or subtract from left to right. So here this is going to be first. We're going to go 30 minus 12, which is going to give us... 18. So we have 18 here. Take away negative 12 
plus 5. Okay, still going from left to right because we have add and subtract or subtract and add. So here, I always tell my students when you have neighboring and they're neighbors, they're right next to each other. So I have my operator of subtraction and my negative. Those two come together and form a positive. So this is actually 18 plus 12 plus 5. And 18 plus 12 will give me 30. And then 30, that's my 30, plus the 5, give me a value of 35. And there's your answer. Now, you can actually use the calculator to actually solve these problems. And basically, if you're going to use the calculator, just input as you see the problem. So if I look at this problem right here as my example, and I put it in the calculator, I have 8, subtract, 6 times 2, take away 44, divide by 11, and hit enter. Gives me a value of negative 8. If we put in the second one, oh, let's see, let's see if I can move the calculator that is not working okay we're going to put it here we have six times five minus 12 take away then there was a three then open parentheses five take away nine close the parentheses and okay the last one was plus five all right and then let's hit enter and there's our answer of 35 okay right there 35 so when you have order of operation just input as it was given to you into the calculator and you should get your answer input as you see it do not divert. Okay, final example. I made sure to include one with a fraction bar. Whenever I have a fraction bar, I actually break it in two. So I put the numerator on one side and the denominator on the other, and I evaluate them separately. So here I have multiplication and subtraction. So multiplication would be first. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Now negative 6 take away 4. Remember when you're subtracting, you keep the first, change it to an addition problem, and basically you're adding the opposite. So the opposite of positive 4 is negative 4. And negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10. When the signs are the same, add and keep the sign. So my numerator is negative 10. Our denominator is 3 squared plus 1. So I have exponents and addition. Exponents would be first. So 3 squared is 9. And I'm adding 1, so that's first. 3 squared is 9 plus 1. That gives me 10. And negative 10 divided by positive 10 will give me negative 1. Because remember, a negative divided by a positive is a negative. When the signs are different, when you're multiplying or dividing, gives a negative result. And again, if you use the calculator, I'm going to clear my screen. Since it's a fraction, we're going to use the fraction function, n over d. Okay, in my numerator, I have negative 3. This is your negative right here. That is a subtraction. So negative 3. And then I open parentheses. Remember I said you're going to input as you see it. And then I'm going to subtract 4. 
and then I'm going to come down to my denominator. Um, I have three squared, so three, here's my square, and then I'm going to add one, and then I'm going to go to the right. There's my cursor, everything is good. It looks like what was given to me, and I hit enter, and notice my answer is negative one. I hope this lesson has been helpful with order of operations. Remember the rule, parentheses, exponents, multiply or divide from left to right or whichever comes first. Add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. Good luck in your task examination.